हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पीजी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन आवर सेंटर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ टीचिंग एक्टिविटीज विच इंक्लूड्स हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग एज वेल इन दिस वीडियो विल बी स्पीकिंग अबाउट सेवन गोल्डन रूल्स वाइल डीलिंग विथ मिड डायलेटेड पीपल एंड वेयर we should go for pupil expansion devices so this is a mid dilated pupil you can see that it's not too small so we can go ahead with the surgery without use of the pupil expansion device now the first thing is that you should have a proper incision you should not have a very short incision because in these cases the iris prolapse is very 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 common now once i put visco you can notice that the pupil didn't expand that much which is also a good sign which indicates that it's not very floppy that means it's going to be stay as it is throughout the surgery now first rule is to judge the ccc size to perfection now how do we judge that without any devices so you can see that the corneal diameter is around 11 mm and if you look at the pupil's diameter it's around half of that now you consider the corneal magnification factor of 12% then the If I follow the pupillary margin, I will get rexis of around five millimeter, and that is something I should keep in mind while I am making the rexis. Now a good OVD here makes it simpler, and of course the experience. So I am grabbing the capsule rexis tear more often here every two clock hours, and then I am going to complete it under the pupil at the end because you can see the pupil little bit constricted as I went around. But I know that the cap the CC size is good here. Now this is a part which requires quite some experience, where you can see that I am going to do hydro dissection with very small amounts of fluid at a time, because if I inject too much, the iris is going to prolapse. And you can see with the single fluid wave, I could you know do a complete hydro dissection, and even I could rotate the uh, nucleus immediately after that. So this requires little bit of experience. So maybe for beginners, it might be a difficult thing to do because you should know exactly how much to inject and where to inject. Just uh, you can see this part of the video again and again. And of course, as you gain experience, you become more confident in doing that. And in that case, you can uh, achieve this hydro dissection in such cases. But always, if you don't achieve good hydro dissection, go for a pupil expansion device immediately. Now, when I start doing phaco emulsification, remember that the first aim is to have a very clean division into two heavy nuclei. So, a deep trench, horizontal position of my Patwadan chopper. Uh, I will also link give the link to the uh, video where I show exactly how it has to be placed at the depth of the trench to achieve complete division. You can see the division is complete. I can see that. Uh, the glow is clearly visible whenever i separate these pieces and the moment i start doing quadrant removal you can see that my chopper patwadhan chopper of 1.5 mm is there to hold that iris back because i am going to use high vacuum here near the pupillary margin to pull out uh, this uh, first piece so whenever there i am going to use this heavy or higher vacuum near the pupillary margin i am going to use the chopper uh, to avoid getting that iris into my phaco tip so once the piece is pulled out i bring it to the center so do that every time when you feel that your tip is going too close to the pupillary margin and also make sure that the phaco tip remains at the center so it sh should we should try to avoid crossing the midline often because once you cross the midline there is high likelihood that you might pull the iris so uh, usually you will you know damage the iris at the time of occlusion break so whenever you expect the occlusion break to happen you should withdraw the phaco tip little bit towards the center and avoid going closer to the iris and also you can use the second hand instrument to keep the iris retracted away now uh, i would say you avoid uh, trying to take out even if there is little bit of ap nucleus you can just take it out with uh, your ia uh, here i am trying to take out that uh, little cortex and it should be avoided i think in such cases because 
but this is just to demonstrate that you will not be damaging the iris if your rotation or the, the position of the tip is correct and you are retracting the iris away. Now during cortex removal because you cannot see the peripheral cortex completely you have to track mentally that all 360 degree cortex is completely removed. So again you can use uh, the patwadan chopper which is a blunt end chopper so you can easily retract the iris and pull out the cortex and I am tracking this cortex all around. So I know that I am pulling out the cortex from the anterior leaf of it and I am completely removing it right till the equator so I know that there is not going to be any residual cortex if I have a doubt I can retract the iris and watch in the periphery if any cortex is left now uh, I am going to use a three piece IOL here not because of any particular indication but uh, in my routine packages also I use three piece IOL often and it's a good IOL to be placed in the bag as well so the IOL is already loaded you can see the uh, leading haptic is on the right side so I'm going to need to rotate the uh, injector a little bit clockwise as I enter and the leading haptic I can see that it has gone directly into the bag I'm going to inject some OVD to form AC and put the optic in the bag and then I'm going to push this optic so that the haptic goes nicely into the bag now it is very important uh, whichever type of IOL that you use you confirm before you close the case that the IOL is completely in the bag because uh, sometimes it may happen because the pupil is on smaller side you may not be able to visualize the haptics properly and either both or one of the haptic might be in the sulcus rather than in the bag and that is something we have to avoid so that you can easily judge you can visualize by retracting the iris uh, near the side of the haptics and check the entry capsule is anterior to these haptics and what if uh, you fail to follow any of these rules right from rule 1 to 7 just use iris retractors or pupil expansion device so just wait pause at the moment use iris retractors or pupil expansion device and go ahead with the surgery so these are the golden rules you must follow while dealing with the mid dilated pupil cataract thank you so much